Well, now that the rudder is uh, pretty much all shaped and more or less uh, finished there, the other part of the rudder assembly here, we have the uh, rudder cheeks, the rudder blocking lower, and the rudder blocking upper parts, and they'd go together somewhat like this. The cheeks is the whole thing, and there's one on each side, and this is the uh, blocking upper and the blocking lower, and they go in between the rudder cheeks and they create the uh, space for where the uh, rudder fits in. So you can see that's a certain thickness, and that should match the thickness of the rudder. You can see here that actually we don't quite have enough thickness uh, because the rudder I actually made slightly thicker than it was supposed to be. So this needs to be thicker by I think three millimeters. Yes, it says blocking is three millimeters thicker than rudder to allow for travel. It is recommended to cut blocking to thickness after the rudder has been finished to a short proper gap. Well, I didn't do that. I cut out all these uh, pieces like a year and a half ago. So. Either I'm going to have to shave down the rudder a little bit or put a little bit more in the blocking pieces. And I also need to make sure that there is a, a little gap here that the downhaul and uphaul can fit through. Otherwise, I'm going to have to drill it afterwards, which would be a little bit of a pain. Okay, so the rudder blocking has to be three millimeters thicker than the uh, head of the rudder. 38 millimeters thick. And the thickness of the rudder blocking right now, 33 and a half millimeters. We need to thicken it up by about five millimeters. I have these uh, thinner bits of plywood left over from another project. And I think that brings the thickness up to 38.8. I've got the spaces cut out for the rudder blocking here. I'm not quite ready to glue this up yet because I need to cut some channels for the downhaul and uphaul. A little bit hard to see maybe, but here is a diagram of how the rudder um, is rigged here. We got the uh, the main rudder foil here and it rotates in that direction and then back down. And there are two lines. This one here, which is attached to the top of the rudder, is the uh, downhaul. So you pull on that and it forces the top of the rudder up and the bottom of the rudder down. And this line here, which attaches to this point, is the uphaul. You pull on that and it pulls the rudder up. Those two lines need to go through the, uh, I don't know what this is called, the, uh, who knows, at some point just below the tiller, because they go along and attach to the tiller. Here it says 3 16 lines. 3 4.76. Okay, so I'll use 5 mil lines for that. So maybe cut a 6 mil channel, I guess. These are the uh, two inner rudder blocking sections here, and they are of a certain thickness. 8.2. If we want two 5 mil lines to be able to go through there, then if we route a channel out of each one, 5 mil, yeah, maybe we route a 6 mil channel. Oh, I don't want to just uh, create a rectangular hole in there. Not sure exactly why, but I don't. So I feel like I want to use this roundy boy. For the depth I want, the hole is going to be quite big. That should do. Well, this is what the rudder sandwich looks like. There's quite a few layers. This of course is the hole for the tiller.
So you got this bit of the rudder all dry fit and all smoothed down so they're all even with each other and all nice. That's just screwed together. I need to uh, take all these bits apart and epoxy them together. But the work of a moment. Clamp done enough. Got the fiberglass on the rudder blade and the upper part of the rudder here. I wrapped it around the leading edge, but uh, it's far too tight to wrap it around the uh, trailing edge, so I've just kind of squished it together. And I've just got this fella hanging up here. Just uh, put a bit of fiberglass on the uh, cheeks there just to give it a bit of extra strength. Yep, I gotta stop touching it now because otherwise I'll never stop. Mm -hmm. 